There isn't a Super Bowl or a World Series or a national championship game to decide who's on top when it comes to designing and engineering the world's most exciting cars. But the Detroit Auto Show comes pretty close to accomplishing the same thing. In just two days' time, we'll see nearly 40 new cars that tease the future of the automotive industry. And the winners and losers are obvious. The reveals are as much about theatrics as they are about the cars. At the first press conference of the morning, Ford doesn't pull any punches in documenting the recent slide of the Accord and Camry as it rolls out an all-new Fusion sedan. If you want the real story on a new car, however, you'll need to get it from somewhere other than the canned speeches. The German automakers carried the show through the worst of the economic downturn, but their 2012 reveals are predictable and flat. Japan and Detroit own the show this year. Cadillac is gunning for the highly regarded BMW 3 Series with the new ATS. Lexus has finally figured out how to design a car that looks exciting. The Scion brand might actually mean something to enthusiasts now, thanks to the affordable rear-wheel drive FRS. And Lincoln desperately needs luxury buyers to notice the redesigned MKZ. The day is packed with more interviews. As much as we're here to see the new metal, this auto show provides unparalleled access to the engineers, designers, and executives who are defining the next generation of cars. Getting FaceTime with these people is how we can write the detailed, informed stories and reviews that Automobile Magazine is known for. The show finally slows down around 5 p.m., but my day isn't done yet. I'm off to dinner with Ford's top executives, including CEO Alan Mulally, and I'm hoping to score more information there. <laughs>